and that just makes it easier to get in here. And I haven't done much to warm it up yet, so let me just go. And I'm automatically going cr crossways to the traps and rhomboids. So this isn't cross fiber friction strictly, this is just moving across fibers. And I think I called it cross fiber in my handout, but it's not friction. So is it better to do that or better to put your arm? Um, so what Roscoe is asking about is you can have the client do this. Advantage of this is the scapula pops way out and I have both hands free. Um, I don't always want to make the client do something. Mm -hmm. Depending on how tight they are, this may actually right. be uncomfortable, so it, sometimes it's fine. But the one thing I like about keeping my hand there is that then, here's a couple of things I can do. One is I can put mm. their scapula through some range of motion. Mm. And remember the neurological component? I can be reminding those proprioceptors about all the ways, it, all the places it can be that it may be forgot about. Did you see how it was jerky the first time or two around and then it's begun to smooth out? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now this is a little hard on my body even with the lunge, so I don't do a lot of it, but you can. Yeah, I was thinking about some big guys. Yeah. I had a weightlifter guy and he was... Yeah. I don't do everything on everyone anymore. I used to try and I just don't anymore. Which is another reason it's good to know more techniques so you mm -hmm. have backup plans. Um, okay, and then I can do, if I want, I could do pin and stretch here. So here's some of that ropey traps that I picked up before. I can put a finger in here and now use the mm. scapula. Remember, trapezius goes from the spine to the spine of the scapula. So I can put a finger in and move it around this way. Mm -hmm. This isn't the best example of pin and stretch. I don't have as much room to move the scapula as I'd like, but you'll see others later where it's more natural. And I can also, I can do it like this. You can use it, you can really, with some people, you can really get back in here. Okay, so that's for traps. What's next? Uh, rhomboids. Okay. Delicate locations, adhesions, okay. slash taut bands, precise okay. hold, slash strip. Okay. So the rhomboids are deeper, right? They're one layer in from the traps. Um, and I'm doing this in between, by the way, partly um, to help create, I don't always do it in real life, I guess I'm partly filling time while we talk, but it also it helps create a sense of integration that she's not just a bunch of little muscles. Mm -hmm. And it's also more relaxing, so it helps her not tense up from the specific work. So it's not bad to do things like that in the middle of deep work. Okay. Rhomboids go upside down V. Um, and they're deeper, they're harder to feel. The clues we have about whether we're feeling them, remember traps go all the way out to kind of here for the insertions. Rhomboids end right here at the medial border of the scapula. Um, so, and they go this direction, whereas the traps at this level are going this way. It's rare, unless it's super tight, it's rare that I'm going to feel a fiber of rhomboid directly. Um, so my best clue about rhomboids being tight would be if I work down the side of the scapula and I feel something snagging my finger, something jumping. There's something here, but did you see when it twitched it was going this way? That's trap. I thought there was a little something up higher, right about here. And the superior angle is all the way up here. So, what muscle did we look at this morning that attached to the superior angle? Levator. Levator goes from here down a little ways, but now I'm too far down to be on levator. And since it's medial border of scapula, it's not traps, so this is probably rhomboids. So now I know that it's going this way. I can see if I can feel the, ex the whole fiber or not, or just the attachment. And I might have to go across it to try to feel it. And I think I just sort of vaguely do. But the middle traps are here also going straight across. So I might choose to stay right here where I do feel it. And it's pretty small, the part I can feel. 
so I just want a fingertip and I might just want to sit on it for a minute you might want to vibrate on it a little bit that feels like it might be doing a little good did I say anything else on there about what I could do on rhomboids? Uh, do you hold strip? Um, hold strip? Hold slash strip. Precise hold slash. Oh, okay. So hold would be just holding. Sorry. Okay, I just meant holding a finger or a thumb on it. You can take your thumb It's usually not ropey enough for me to pull it out individually mm -hmm. without getting the traps instead. So you can't do it. And it's going to. You can't do it. Like that. Can't do it. In that plane. Um. Oh, you mean just by doing something like this? On a C. On a C. Like that? But I'm, I can't feel if I've got that fiber as opposed to the trap. Two thumbs like oh, that. like that? Yeah. Because since you have a cut up there, and yeah. just do it like that a little bit, you can not be so far away. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's a possibility. Yeah, and actually that mm. feels like that might be getting it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Right. So that's why I don't usually get to do that with rhomboids. Okay. okay. What is next? Electors. Okay. Bar um, Barb, who's giving these these suggestions, has some experience, <laughs> not yeah. in quite this, but related things. <laughs> so she knows what she's talking about. Next. Erectors. Erectors. Uh, cross fiber with heels and hands. Okay. Angling from the heels carrier laterally. Okay. So now I'm going to go a little deeper. I'm going to try to pick a side. Maybe I'll just do it quick on both sides. So heels of hands. And there's two reasons that I like to go at this kind of angle. So now I'm trying to go in a little deeper than I did with my fingers. It's more warmed up. Mm. One reason is, remember how the iliocostalis kind of went like that. So I might actually be stripping part of it by going out at an angle. That's, it's not even across the fiber. I might just be following it when I do that down here. But second, for some reason, I've noticed that at least the erectors can take more pressure going up than going down. And so this lets me mix in a little bit of that upward direction with the cross fiber. I guess this is like a strumming in a sense. It's like a um, when you go across and you're essentially slightly deforming and then jumping over it. I guess that's more of a strumming than a, it's not a friction. Um, but it's a gentler kind of, a, of strumming to use the flat of my hand and do it slow and do it with a big um, upward component mixed in. So what this would do is it would s gently stretch the erectors out, especially maybe iliocostalis, stretch them out a little bit and lengthen them mechanically like lengthening rubber bands, stretching rubber bands. Okay, so I can work my way up one side. When I do the other side, I can do the same thing here. Oh, there's that tight spot again that's tighter over here than on the other side. So I might spend extra time there. I might try to be more precise on it. Not too much at once. I started to feel that it might fight back if I did. Here's something else I like to do with, with a place like that. This is a, a kind of deformation too, I guess. I'm changing the shape of whatever it is in here. So the heels of the hands, angle. Not so much here where I run into the scapulas, but it's good down here. What do I have next? QL. Okay. Strip attachments, especially origin, circle adhesions, okay. locating things slash deform from sides. Okay. Now the QL might be tight on either side for different reasons on Stephine. It might be tight here because we saw something's pulling this hip up but it could be what I'm feeling here. Um, I think what's going on is tight right psoas, tight left QL. 